Welcome to a very special Manga Mavericks podcast. Today, we're looking back at Pokemon Adventures, one of the most successful Pokemon comics in the world, perhaps the most successful, actually I do think it is. It's been going on for 20 years, 20 years strong, as long as the anime celebrates the same anniversary in the same month, and we're here to talk about it today. With me is my friend Jonathan. How's it going, folks? <laughs> and we also have returning guest Annalisa Chrisman, English letterer for Pokemon Adventures for Wiz Media. Hello, hello. Very excited. Yeah, we're here to talk about Pokemon. We're going to, we read them all. Now we're going to talk about them all. Or at least as much as we can in three hours. <laughs> or less. Who knows? I mean, it's a 20 year long franchise that encompasses about every system Nintendo's put out since the uh, Game Boy. So, and my gosh. I mean, think about it this way. It takes less time to read it all than it takes to watch the entire Pokemon anime, which is almost a thousand episodes long. <laughs> <laughs> and only about, what, three seasons of that are like? Also, also uh, t well, it's, it's a bit shorter than it takes to play them all. I happen to have all the games with me here. <laughs> <laughs> Except, you well, brought them all? I, I, well, most of them. Didn't bring the GameCube ones or the N64 ones. <laughs> Did you bring all the consoles to play them with? You yes. Have a yes. <laughs> He's taking them out of the bag. You can't see this, folks, but he's taking them all out of the bag. All right, there we go. <laughs> I like this. Oh my this, God. Is, this, is, this is my special Pikachu edition. It was my very first one. Oh, and man, me too. Oddly enough, I was, um, oddly enough, I'm, like, actually 19, so I was a bit behind on the times. <laughs> I think that's a good place to start. We should talk really about kind of how we got into Pokemon and how we got into Pokemon Adventures. Um, so for me, I got into Pokemon actually pretty late. I wasn't that into it like when it was first starting as a big phenomenon. So I kind of missed out on like all the early years. And I only really got into it in Thousands 3 when it started, you know, playing on Cartoon Network every day. And, you know, I just randomly started catching episodes and like I got into it because there are cute creatures and they're all like fighting each other and you know the characters were funny and i liked their dynamic and team rocket was of course like the biggest draw they were great they were all, you know their gender stereotype defying like crazy fun loving hooligans you know i always enjoy their antics so I, I became a huge fan of pokemon and then i became obsessed with pokemon like all the other kids my age and i went out and got tried to get the games that I got, like, Pokemon Yellow and Pokemon Blue. And I had a Game Boy Advance, so I was just playing it on there, but I got those. And then I also, you know, started, like, trying to consume everything Pokemon I could. Like, I got all the music CDs that Ooh. four kids oh, made. Oh, man, memory! You, like, Pokemon oh, so Christmas Bash. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Who's I was that Pokemon? The Pokemon Christmas Bash. Who's that Pokemon? <laughs> Party from and Misty Brock and Ash. My, uh, I have I have some great memories of a uh, very very cold Boy Scout camp out at uh, um up at Tower Sudan at the uh, um near the mining thing. It was about I don't know ten, ten below in, in the fall. And me and my friend were uh, huddled up together in a tent, and he had an iPod, and he had Pokemon Christmas Bash, and I was like, <laughs> this is what I'm going to do today. <laughs> I still have that CD somewhere. It's, oh, it's so mm, oh bl God bless you <sighs> four kids, God bl I have, you know, Eric Stewart's like an actual musical artist, and I don't think he's ever sounded worse. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, someone, someone should honestly review the music on those CDs, because there's a lot of Pokemon music they made for the English version that is just insane. But before, before we get before we get off track, I just want to say I want to say I'm going to say one last thing about the Pokemon music. Team Rocket Forever. Um, you know that song that they sang when they uh united with me off. Yeah. So it's, um, so it's like you know that we're Team Rocket and we fight for what is wrong. So in the episode, they they sing it really really well. And Eric Stewart's like a great voice actor, and the Japanese version of the song is, mmm, it's a really great song, but in the CD version, which is the only full version of the song, 
they intentionally sing it badly because four kids told them to. Oh, yeah. It's so bad. It's like, it's actually a really, really great song about the team dynamics and how they work together. And they like start infighting in the middle of it, but they're trying their best to put out an album for their boss, Giovanni. <laughs> so they gotta do it. Yeah. I think that's a different song from Double Trouble, but I know what you're oh, yeah, talking yeah, 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 about. Yeah. That one is yeah. a path of trouble. I love Double Make Trouble. I, double. I, that's, you know, I have a bunch of Pokemon music in my playlist. But, you know, enough talking about Pokemon music. We're here to talk about Pokemon Suzuki manga. Song! Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, obviously I was re- getting into everything Pokemon. I got toys, and so I got uh, the music CDs, like we said. Like, I, I was obsessed with getting everything and everything Pokemon. I, obviously, eventually I would discover the comic books. And so there, I discovered, you know, the original floppies. That like Wiz was putting out for back in the day of all the different kinds of Pokemon series. Like you got Magical Pokemon Journey, uh, Pikachu I Choose You, a bunch of different ones. And of the course. Electric Tail of Pikachu. <laughs> yeah. Electric Tail of Pikachu too. And, uh, I, I, of course I discovered Pokemon Adventures that way just from looking at all the Pokemon comic books at the library and you know, they were the original like monthly floppy editions that was put out and the, uh, ones I found were from the yellow art. You know, and I was just obsessed with everything Pokemon at the time, and I, you know, wasn't really discriminated on what is what, so I just got uh, whatever Pokemon things I can, and I started reading yellow art, and I of all the Pokemon comics, yellow was the, the Pokemon Adventures yellow art stuff that I found was my favorite, because it was just so different from everything else. Like, it had kind of more of a cohesive story than a lot of the others, which were more episodic and kind of jumped around in terms of the plot. The Pokemon Adventure stuff, it had more of a linear story. It actually wanted me to, made me want to go and, you know, try and read it all in order, which I don't think I managed to do when I was a kid. And it was only years later that I was able to actually read it in order. <laughs> but, yeah, so I got into it that way, and I just really loved the interpretations of the characters in uh the yellow arc and you know it was really cool because having not read the red arc before there was also all this like mystery of like oh there's stuff that's already happened and in these characters lives and you're just try- and i was just trying to piece it all together what's going on and so i was like blown away like during the flashback chapters where it's like red fighting bruno i was like oh so this is the red guy they're always talking about <laughs> wow oh man this is dark like he got frozen by lorelei Oh man, is he really dead? Oh man! Uh, and one of the reasons I think I really loved it is just the original characters too, yellow and blue. Uh, I should say green. Green is what we'll be calling her since that's what she's in the wizard translations. But yeah, so yellow, you know, and green, they're not like based on, uh, you know, they're not based on previous characters from other iterations of the franchise. Like with red and blue, like they kind of look like Ash and Gary. So I'm like, and the protagonist and rival from the games. So I'm like, okay, I recognize these guys immediately. But Yellow and Blue, they were like original characters, and they're not in the other versions. So it's like, huh, who are these guys? And they're, and you know, they're strong, and they're like really strong female characters and really unique. And I was in, totally into that. It was like, yeah, cool, more proactive female characters in my media. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And so. I was, Girl power. <laughs> and I really loved Yellow as a character because I totally related to like her stance on things, because like she was, she just like wanted to hang out and you know be friends with her Pokemon. She wasn't really into battling. But, like as a kid, I was like totally swept up in the fantasy. You know, I just want to hang out with Pokemon. I just want them to be friends, and I could totally relate to the idea. Like she doesn't want like her friends to change, and like so she was kind of you know upset when they started to evolve. And she really literally started that. crying, and that. Yeah. So I totally, you know, I know some people didn't like that about her because like, oh, she's whiny. Like, grow up. You know, it just evolves. It's like the same Pokemon deep down, whatever. But like, I, I could totally understand like the surface emotions because I like, I, I was feeling the same way as a kid. Like, I, I was also kind of afraid of like my friends changing and like, I was kind of afraid of things changing. And I, I just wanted to hang out with all my good buddies and like, and one of the things to say that was saying forever. So I, I totally related to her character and her kind, peaceful heart. So I, I would really, I really, really enjoy the yellow arc. I also just like the fact that the Elite Four were villains. I thought that was a really cool idea. But, you know, we're going to talk about the arc specifically more later. But yeah, basically, you know, I was really fond of Pokemon Adventures, uh, 
but you know, I only had read the Yellow Arc, and you know, Wiz stopped releasing uh, Pokemon Avengers for quite a while, and it wasn't until a couple years later uh, they started releasing these best of editions. They released the best of Pokemon Adventures Red and best of Pokemon Adventures Yellow. And so when I discovered those in like Barnes and Nobles one day, I was like, oh, cool, Pokemon Adventures, I remember this. And I got the red one because I hadn't read any of the red arc before. So I was like, you know, I should, you know, as much as I love the yellow stuff, I never read the original red stuff, so I should probably do that. And so, you know, these are chapters like all out of order in the series. But, you know, I read through it. I just thought it was really cool. I could get into it. And, like, the climax of the Red Arc is just really cool, too. For me, it's kind of, like, one of the most memorable battles because of how uh, long the rivalry between Red and Green was set up. And, like, the the final battle itself was really cool with, you know, uh, Pikachu and Polyrad and Musa all doing this big combined Thunderbolt attack on uh, Charizard. That really sparked my interest in, like, reading more of the series. But, you know, unfortunately back then, there weren't a lot of scans and stuff. Uh, and there were also, you know, the, there weren't any more releases of the series past the red and yellow stuff. So eventually I did hunt down original volume releases of the red stuff and uh, read those. But it wouldn't be until a couple of years until actually just recently when I just start, decided, you know, okay, it's time, finally time. I'm going to finally read through the entire thing. And so actually last year, after Weekly Manga Recap announced that, you know, they're going to go through each arc of Pokemon Adventures in order, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, I haven't done that yet. I've still only ever read the red and yellow stuff. So I was like, okay, um, the library has all of it. I'll just go get all the volumes from the library and I'll binge read through the entire thing. So over the course of two weeks last year, I did that. And I was like, yeah, this is Everything I've ever wanted out of a Pokemon story, I love this. This is, like, totally one of the best manga I've ever read. It's perfect for me. But it, it, and, you yeah. read the entire thing? Like, everything that's out in two weeks? Yeah. Dang! I, I mean, I've read almost all of it in one, and I would have finished today. Dang! <laughs> okay, to be fair, I was doing it, I was, I was doing it kind of on the job, but... <laughs> you were getting not... paid for it, though. <laughs> and you have a life outside of reading manga. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> not this week, anyways. <laughs> you have no idea how many obligations I've just... Whoop, just just for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that's basically my history. I want to get into your guys' histories now. Uh, how about you, Jonathan? All right. Mine's a lot more varied and a little bit more pathetic, actually, because... <laughs> <laughs> My, um, because, because, uh, every, if everybody had those parents, uh, it, it was, so, so, I, I, right now I'm 19 years old. So, back when I was in elementary school, Let's say, uh, third, fourth grade, some of my friends started getting into Pokemon because, hey, it's, it's Pokemon. It's a kind of a really, really cool thing. Um, my parents didn't think that it was a godly thing. They're not, like, actually, like, super, super Christian people. They just kind of got caught up in the hysteria and nobody knew how to use the internet. So they just kind of didn't. So I wasn't allowed to watch the show. I was, however, allowed to get some of the cards and I was allowed to read some of the guidebooks. So one of my, so, uh, like at a friend's house, I read through the, um, Scholastic was releasing these, like, even when Diamond and Pearl, like, the games were out. So I was reading through the, uh, the, the guidebook be released before Gold and Silver. And I was like, wow, look at all this, all the biologies of these Pokemon. I want to be their friends. And then my grandma had, uh, some VHSs of the anime. Um, and I thought they were really, really cool. It was the Snorlax episode and some other ones. Can't remember. Anyways, so so around a, around a certain time, I got enough money, I bought my own Pokemon game for my DS, and I was like, haha, you can't do anything about this, and it was Heart Gold and Soul Silver, but um, before that I had obtained a copy of Yellow from my uncle, so my parents were just like, alright, you, you can play your games now. <laughs> so I played through, played through Yellow, it was absolutely wonderful, I was in middle school around this time, absolutely obsessed with Pokemon, I started watching every episode of the anime, and... Around this, uh, uh, slightly around this time, my friend, uh, dro my friend dropped a manga, a manga book in the hallway. And his Pokemon Adventure, Best of Pokemon Adventures, Yellow. I was like, "Who the heck is that?" <laughs> He's like, "It's like, oh, it's a, it's it's it's, it's Yellow." And I'm like, I "I'm playing Yellow. Holy heck! This is a this is cool." <laughs> and so so I, I um I read uh, so 
Um, so, so since, but like, my very first exposure to Pokemon was, like, guidebooks and stuff, I'd always imagined what it would be like to, like, live with Pokemon. Battling wasn't really a big thing. I was always like, I would never make my Pokemon fight if they didn't want to. And <laughs> Yellow just kind of, that's what Yellow was. Her whole thing was that she tried to avoid conflict, and she, and she seemed to be a, a, a slightly naive secret agent, and that was really, really cool to me at that time. I, I like the mysterious shadowy figure of Green in the background doing stuff. So, like, I thought Green was, like, some sort of super cool, mystical... Uh, what would be an apt description? I don't know. Let's say uh, M from James Bond. <laughs> um, so, the Elite Four. Um, I had always thought that they were, like, the paragons of virtue, but here they are, and they're evil, and the gym leaders are banding together to get rid of them. And I was like, wow, look at the gym leaders doing stuff. I had to see Brock and Misty doing this in the anime. Wow! <laughs> this, this is, they're so proactive! This is so cool! <laughs> <laughs> and like, and then at the end, of the th um, then, then at the end, spoilers, um, it, um, where all the main characters come together. So like the character that I've been playing as in Yellow, um, Red, my rival, who seemed to be grown up and super super cool, and he had an awesome cape, and that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and uh, and Green, of course, who's really really cool. And I lo uh, and I just kind of loved her fighting style. It was very very. It was based off of trickery. She was using Pokemon that were some of my favorite Pokemon because they were adorable and cute, like a Clefairy and Jigglypuff, but she was using them in inventive ways. It's like they're all coming together, and Yellow, the the um the young girl, doesn't want to doesn't want to fight. Uh, the reveal was actually kind of a big thing for me. I was like, whoa, I that's a girl <laughs> <laughs> going up against a thing that was obviously Lugia and this character Lance, who I thought was the absolute coolest thing ever since I was like I don't know seven. Oh, so cool! He was Samusu before Samusu. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So, so, so after I read that, I found out like a little bit later that I could use the internet on my DSi because I I begged my parents to buy me a DSi and uh, I got one. So because I, I don't know, I didn't don't know why I didn't use the computer for this. So I found websites where you could read manga online. Holy <laughs> heck! Wow, wow! So I so I just would sit in my room for hours reading Dragon Guard scanlations of a Pocket Monsters special, and it was the sweetest thing ever. There were some mistranslations, but you know what? It was okay. I followed it. It was wonderful. I was I was playing through. Um, I, I at that point I had acquired like I, I had Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Beaten those, loved them. Thought it was super cool to see red and um, r red and blue in games, and I was like, oh, that was just a kind of little fanboy moment for me. <laughs> my, very, my very first one, I uh, played through Platinum. I didn't have any of the Game Boy games, unfortunately, but my friends did, so I played some of those. And I had Pearl for some reason. I don't know why I bought that because I got Platinum first, but. As you do, you wanted them all. Gotta I, catch them I, all. They, yeah, they gotta catch them all. you to wanting everything Pokemon. I, honestly, I had I had three books full of the trading cards, even though I didn't play the games. <laughs> I had watched the entire first season, and I was in the Orange Islands arc. I, I kind of dropped off after that because it's getting kind of boring. But I've gotten on with X and Y and Sun and Moon. Those are pretty good. I watched Sun and Moon with my little brother. It's pretty decent, actually. I would I would recommend checking it out, even if you don't like the art style. I think it works well with animation. They sh they should be doing something with Lucamine. They've been teasing it. <laughs> They've been really teasing it. <laughs> Can't wait for the Bobby issues. <laughs> yeah. Um. So then I'd reach the Gold and Silver arc, and I'm like, oh boy, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, this is the best thing ever. But I mean, I. I hadn't played Gold and Silver, but except on emulators online, on an emulator that you couldn't save the game on. Oh, ouch! <laughs> yeah, but I spent like I've still played through them because I thought because I I had the uh, DS versions, so I thought the Game Boy versions were the coolest thing ever too because I liked old things. Still do. I have 18 video game systems. Somebody stop me! <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, so, but then Dragon Guard Scanlations after the uh, first volume. Of gold and silver stopped because of that evil company Viz Media. I Bye. didn't. Oh, <laughs> you, you ruined my life, Anna. <laughs> I think you're getting the heroes and villains mixed up. I, 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 I mean, now I know that I really am. But like at the time, Viz sent Dragon Guard a cease and desist, and I was like really, really getting into gold and silver because. Uh, like, they seem to be building up to something cool, and it just ended with a silver and gold fighting the Mask of Ice and being uh, at the Lake of Rage. And that was sweet! But Viz Media was started, was very, very slowly, I don't know how, like, how silly, because I haven't looked up, like, the actual release dates, but it seemed to me very slowly releasing uh, volumes starting with the beginning, because they were retranslating stuff. 
Then I found out that they were censoring stuff, and since I was a budding young weeaboo, I was like, oh, those American companies and their censorship. <laughs> Re Americans ruin everything. Sorry, well, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, you obviously covered up uh, uh, Green's uh, breast thing, which oh, totally added so much. That one actually wasn't me. I didn't do that one. <laughs> Almost all the others, I did. <laughs> yeah. Did you do the did you do the edit where like when Crystal's mom is like yes, slap I Crystal? Did. <laughs> that was you son of a gun! And the and the and when like Norman is trying is like uh, he throws us down the Ruby. stairs. Yeah, that and, was and in the fifth edition, it's a light like this, it's a uh, lightning they edit ball. In, like it's a lightning ball. To, I can tell then... you so many stories about that one when we get to Ruby and Sapphire. Oh goodness, <laughs> Shuang Yi didn't censor that one, and they flipped the manga. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm actually, I'm, uh, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm not mad about that. It's for kids, and child abuse is kind of a big thing in American culture. So we pro, and the fathers doing that to their kids isn't isn't exactly appropriate. So I understand. But yeah, so so then I start. Um, so then there were some, there were some other fan translations trying to pick stuff up at the time, but they were skipping around a lot, like. Uh, like so, they skip to the uh, um. So like, they start with Crystal. Then suddenly we're at the Tin Tower with Suicune, and then suddenly we're fighting the Mask of Ice at um it, it, in the Indigo Plateau. And I'm like, why is there an Indigo Plateau? I thought that is that is that is that the Elite Four? Why are they good? Why is Bruno here? I thought he was bad. <laughs> why is this happening to me? <laughs> So yeah, I kind of gave, uh, gave up on the manga and the anime for years and years until um, in high school when we got iPads, uh, because that's a great idea. 10 out of 10, I read manga during class all the time. <laughs> uh, um, and then I found that people have been scanlating the Chang Yi translations. And at that time, I was replaying a, a, um, Emerald. Uh, X and Y had just come out, and uh, Oraz hadn't been announced yet. But it was obviously on the way. People were saying Hoenn confirmed all the time. Water trumpet memes all over Slash VP because reasons. And, and, and I had, like, very, very fond memories of Pokemon Adventures. So I was, like, still a very, very big fan of it. I just wouldn't buy any of his releases because I was a stupid little kid. And I, I would still say, hey, you need to read uh, Pokemon Adventures instead of watching that silly anime. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, manga but, is always better. Manga is it, it's as much as I enjoy X and Y and Sun and Moon. The manga is so much better, yeah. honestly. <laughs> although, although I do like some of the fights in X and Y because Gucci animation, <laughs> even though it's a lot, just a lot of jumping. So I read through the Chen Yi translations of uh, um, Gold and Silver and uh, Ruby and Sapphire, and then after I had read through uh, everything up to uh, till uh, Diamond and Pearl, which I didn't pay much attention to, oddly enough. I reached Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and I was like, "Oh boy, my favorite games of all time!" And they're doing it. Ruins of Alf. Let's go. I know how well they handled Yellow and Emerald. Let's see how they do things. Well, the fan translator, the fan translator stopped because oh. I, I Viz, Viz Media wasn't translating it at the time, so I was like, I, my, my, the only op venue was fan translations. The fan translator stopped right um, when Giovanni Price Lance. And um, it, um and the Pokedex holders were fighting the uh, were fighting the Team Rocket admins. RCS had uh, RCS had just had just formed uh, um Palkia Dialga and Garatina. I was like, oh boy, stuff is going down. And that's all. And th that's <laughs> all she wrote. Viz Media was releasing black and white at the time, but they were only releasing the Koro Koro issues. Anonymous Scanlations was doing Scanlations at the time, but also only of the Koro Koro issues. So I was reading the first volume, and I'm like. Okay, so they're introducing black and white. Okay, this is this is good. All right. Okay, they're in Striaton City. Why did they mention Sharon and Bianca? I thought they weren't in this manga. Okay, now they now we're with Grimsley and not the Desert Underpass. I can't remember what that area is called. Um, it's a construction area. I keep calling it Desert Underpass because I've been playing a lot of Gen Three recently. But then they're there, and I'm just like, okay, I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna stop now. I mean. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still a big Pokemaniac, and it was absolutely wonderful for me to read through everything. Although I, I didn't read the Viz translations, because I didn't have time to rent them from the library. You dirty pirate! I am a pirate! I swear, I swear, I swear The Shonen Jump mascot is gonna make you walk the plank! I love that, dude. <laughs> I, 
I swear to you, me and my little brother, I, I, I'm getting him into the manga. I'm going to buy every single one of your beautifully lettered volumes. Please don't report me. <laughs> uh, Too I bought, I, late. Oh, no. Yeah. The manga yeah. cops are on their way. Oh, no. The consequences will never be the same. Um, They're I, gonna take you like they took Josh Dunham. <laughs> <laughs> um, recently for Christmas, I, I, um, since I, um, I just recently got my little brother into Pokemon. He just got a 3DS, um, and he's been playing through Sun and Moon with me, and it's so fun. I got him the Pokemon Adventures box set of one through seven because it was on sale for twenty bucks. Um, I read through it again, and then a beautiful senpai lord and savior invited me onto the podcast, and I'm just like, Sam, I'm stealing your books. <laughs> they're mine now. Sorry. <laughs> and they're very beautifully lettered, by the way. I have absolutely no idea why I had anything against Viz outside of, like, their initial translations. But even with the censorship, the jokes work very, very well. A lot of the puns are very good, well translated outside of the chapter titles, which were taken from the original floppy. So I can't, I can't blame any of you guys at at Viz now for that. But they're really bad puns. As a connoisseur of bad puns, and as somebody who actually enjoyed the manzai in a uh, diamond and pearl and platinum, even though a lot of it wasn't very well translated because I was reading off of a uh, scanlations by Chung Ye, Yi, which was going out of business at the time, and anonymous, which. They were doing very little translations. It's bad titles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Viz version of Pokemon has had its ups and downs, let's just say. <laughs> it, I, it, it really, really has, from what I understand of the publication. I can't tell if it's popular or not in America, because it apparently sells a lot. It's won awards. It like actually won a Nickelodeon Kids Choice Award, and it was nominated. It wasn't like it was just like oh one of the choices, so the kids chose it. No, no, like kids read it, and it was and it won like a, a major TV network Kids Choice Award back in when Nickelodeon was actually a relevant television station that people watched <laughs> before Netflix came out. Again, I haven't heard of anybody who's actually read the darn thing. It sells a lot, obviously. It's just. I think it's because we are old ass adults now, and we aren't into what the kids are are doing these days. Are you telling me that? Are you telling me that Masuda's are right and kids can't get into complicated stuff now? Are you telling me that Jeff Loeb's right and kids can't into storylines? Avengers Assemble was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this has been a, a Pokemon Adventures to me, anyways. Is a fanboy. It is the ultimate accumulation of every single piece of obscure trivia that I've loved, <laughs> th 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 that I've accumulated over the years. I always thought, like, there's always something that I'm like, only I know about this, because I read Ken Sugimori's production material. No, no, it's in here. It's in here. <laughs> like, if I can, what? I was like, if I can name it, it's in here. Like, um, once I tried to do a run of a Pokemon Emerald based off of um, Ruby's team, because he's my favorite character, and I was like, okay, I maybe can play loose with natures because, like, I wanted because I wanted to catch Pokemon certain natures to like go with like the builds that I was going with. The natures like of Ruby's Pokemon actually work with um like within the context of the games to each Pokemon's strengths. Even recommended builds by Smogon, so like a uh, his Mudkip Zuzu. I don't remember what it was called in the Viz translation, but I think it's Moo Moo. Yeah, it's Moo Moo in the Viz translation. I read a little bit of it. My little brother read through the entire thing, but I didn't because I had just recently read it and I was playing through the games at the time and I had some homework to do or something. It's got a relaxed nature, which that's what everyone recommends for Mudkip, and I think Coco always has a certain nature. Blah 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 blah. They actually have great strategies for the games. They have little bits of um tr uh, stuff from the side games. They, uh, like, referencing, like, the National Pokédex uh, transferring between regions, how Deoxys does a thing, and, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save my, my trump card for later, but, yeah. <laughs> you should probably go into your experience with Pokémon now. Just, point is, I love Pokémon. I'm also watching the anime all the way through now for X and Y and the uh, Sun and Moon. God help me. Arceus, help you. <laughs> At least you're not going I am part of the again. Church of Mew! <laughs> Arceus, <laughs> not, Arceus is a false god! <laughs> oh, shut your dirty mouth! <laughs> <laughs> Any, if anybody have ta talks about Lord Helix or Lord Dome, I will end you. Mew is the one true god because I am the <laughs> ultimate Gen One. Also, Mew was always my, was my favorite Pokemon as a kid, and I actually wrote little fan fictions about me and Mew going on little adventures together, Aww. based off of Pokemon adventures. Like little, like I was in the place of Yellow because I love Yellow, and she's my spirit animal. Although my favorite character of all time is still Ruby because. She's so cute! Oh god! Oh god, I want- I would totally date him. Him or Wallace. Either one. 
you you can tell us about your experience with Pokemon. I doubt it's as homoerotic. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm deeply interested in your experience, Aunt Lisa, because you're like a few years older than us. And, I'm a uh, lot of years older than you guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, yes. It, um, and so, you would probably experience Pokemania firsthand. I I was I always wanted to, but I was just on the tail end. I was where the franchise was dying. Like. Diamond and Pearl was apparently like a very very dark time for the franchise because kids stopped caring. Uh, I'm gonna go into my experience again just to, to cut you off because I don't like. You. I'm kidding. I love you. Um, <laughs> like it was like uh, Pokemon was popular for in, at my elementary school. And this is apparently like a thing at other elementary schools for a total of like a year, and then it became uncool to like it. But I had some friends who were are normies now, but they would put on Pokemon in the background when we were playing games together. Like we, we were very very young, so like actual games, not video game. And he's like, oh, uh, I don't actually like this. I'm just having it on because I, uh, of how uh, dumb it is. <laughs> Posers. Like, that's actually what he said. And then afterwards, he confessed to me that he really, really liked Pokemon, and he still wanted to play Pokemon together Aww. at recess. Like, not, like, play the games, but play Pokemon. Pokemon, that, you know, you pretend to be Pokemon, and you guys yeah, have yeah, your new sets. I, I, yeah. It's so I've done fun. that. I've, I've done that, and I may or may not do that with my plushies occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, okay? Nothing wrong with that. I wish the figurine line was successful so we, I could play with little figurines. I, I made mini movies back in the day with my Pokemon toys. Oh, that's so cool! Create all cool. sorts of elaborate stories. And, like, whenever the toy got broken, like, I worked that into the narrative. <laughs> like, I, my Slowpoke toy lost its tail, so I wrote that, oh, it got cut off and eaten by Team Rocket. And then I uh, tried Charizard toy lost it the top of its head oh so like goodness. oh now it's a char zombie <laughs> <laughs> i actually i actually played with the game cartridges themselves as well as actual characters i in middle school I even carried around my pokemon yellow cartridge as a good luck charm and it kept falling out of my pocket during pe and my teacher <laughs> got really mad at me all the time <laughs> i also played it on my game boy um on my stand and band class <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> All right, your experience is Pokemania. I love hearing about this kind of thing anyways, so go ahead. All right, so uh, I was in sixth grade when the anime started in America, and I wasn't supposed to watch TV after school. Mm -hmm. um, but my brother and I would get home, and we'd watch TV. My, of course. You know, my, par my parents were both at work. My mom was a teacher, an elementary school teacher, so my sister would go to school with my mom, you know. So she'd be gone until my mom got home. But I was in sixth grade, so I started at a at a different school. And so it was just me and my brother at home, and we'd watch cartoons in the afternoon and then, you know, turn off the TV before the parents came home so they would never find out. And we started seeing these commercials for this show. They're like, oh, it's crazy, and it's from Japan. And we're like, yeah, okay, this looks so dumb. So dumb. And we watched the first episode because it's so dumb. And we look at each other, we're like, we should probably watch the second one, because this is really stupid, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and then we just watched it every day after that, and it was amazing. And, like, that weekend, I think, we're like, so we need more of this. And my brother, who's, like, three or four years older, I think he was in high school, mm -hmm. was like, I hear it's based on off of a video game. So we got our parents to take us down to Target, and they had red and blue, and he's like, well, I get red. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get blue. And, like, you know, we put our little, like, you know, all the money we had as little kids, like, here you go, please. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and so, so we, we bought those. And then, then we found out there's the trading card game coming out, but we couldn't afford to buy like two starter decks. And we only had one starter deck at the time and it was firefighting. Nice. But the hollow that came with it was mod champ. And I wanted the fire half because like my brother and I had to split it because we didn't have enough money to buy two. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted the fire half. But we both agreed that that was the cooler half. So mm -hmm. he made me, since I was younger, take the fighting half. But he's like, but you get the holofoil Machamp. So you're getting a good deal here. And I was like, I don't want the Machamp. I want the fire <laughs> Pokemon. But then we'd like try to play against each other, but we each only had half a deck. So it was kind of, <laughs> it was difficult. But uh not many kids around that time were into Pokemon. So it was really me and my brother. Then uh, our neighbors got into it, so so we would play the video games, and you know, between all of us, we we were able to get 150, you know, the 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 whole Pokedex for the first time. And yeah, it was 
it was like a moment I will never forget. <laughs> like I, it, it's almost like, where were you when? Well, where was I when I got that 150th Pokemon? It was amazing. I was in the second floor of my friend's house. If you still have the cartridge, get a Game Boy printer, print out that certificate, <laughs> frame it on your wall. Just print a little piece of thermal paper on your wall. <laughs> Don't put it in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put it in the sun. <laughs> By God, just keep a little pixelated. Pe oh, is it, or is the printing function only in yellow? If it is, you're crap out of luck. I think I might be crap out of luck. But then, like after that, I think I—I I don't remember how I got yellow, but I, I got yellow. Maybe I saved up for it. And then my brother and I would buy every game that came out, and he'd always get the first named one, and I'd get the second named one. Mm -hmm. And I think around Diamond Pearl, he stopped buying it because he's like. They're just doing the same thing over and over again. And I was like, I can't disagree, but I can't give up Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So, to this day, I still get the second named one, and I'm trying to get him back into it, but he's too serious and has a life outside of Pokemon. And I don't know what that is. How does one do that? Yeah, it's weird. But, yeah, like I said, like nobody in sixth grade in, in my class was really into Pokemon. So, it was just kind of, you know, me by, me by myself. But uh, in middle school, oh, this is this is kind of a uh, terrible, sad. I had no real friends, <laughs> yeah. So like Same. slowly but surely, I I would save up money and buy like new packs of trading cards, and I would play against myself at lunch because I had no friends. I mean, I did the same. <laughs> Well, actually, what I did was since I didn't understand how the game worked because it was too complicated for my young mind, I just kind of like gave them the rules that they had in the anime because I had a. I actually had a Team Rocket Lava Fett, and I'd be like, "Oh, sweet!" And there's, and there's a, and it, my friend convinced me that the e-reader thing on the side of the cards meant that it was like Ash's Pokemon. So I had an e-reader Pikachu. So I was like, "This is an Ash's Pikachu blows them all away." <laughs> I don't care what it says on the card; it wins no matter what. No matter what, <laughs> always it's got the most powerful thunder shot. <laughs> Which <laughs> it can even hurt ground types. Oh my god! But it, but it doesn't work against level five Snivys. No, no, of course not. Why would <laughs> yeah, it? Because, That'd be silly. Because, because 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 best wishes was obviously the best arc. Oh my goodness! <laughs> That's the reason why I stopped watching the anime. Yeah, I, I started segue. I started rewatching, like starting up watching the anime again for best wishes because I was like, oh, this is a great place to start again. No. And then, like, he, he, he loses all just like, and we turn it off. That's all. <laughs> I don't need to watch this. If, 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 you, if we can allow a small segue for a second. I really want, I really wanted to get into it because of the, uh, Team Rocket versus Team Galact, Team Plasma arc that was gonna happen. And the earthquake happened. Oh, that got scrapped. <laughs> yeah. And then I, then I found, then I found out that they were, um, putting it into a season called Episode N. And I was like, <gasps> oh. There's Looker! There's N! They're gonna reveal the mystery of the Rubik's Cube thing that was only alluded to as being some sort of mystical object in the promotional materials that were revealed only in New York at one point. Wow, this is gonna be great! It wasn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for anybody who liked it. I'm, I'm very sorry, but I think it's the weakest one. Yeah. <laughs> We should do a whole podcast about the anime oh, <laughs> some other time. <laughs> oh, that's going to be much more of a time investment, but yeah. go ahead, my friend, <laughs> my buddy. But, Annalisa, continue uh, on. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, so I had, like, no real friends in middle school, but I had Pokemon. But then, uh, when I started high school, a girl came up to me, and she was, like, like in middle school, I'd eat lunch with this group, and it was, like... Mm -hmm girls that I had been on, like, soccer teams with, so, like, I kind of knew. I just mm -hmm. didn't really consider them my friends. No, not because I was being stuck up. I just didn't trust anybody at the time. I, <laughs> I trusted really. nobody. But I get, into, I get into high school, and this girl that had been in this lunch group was like, hey, I, I hear you like Pokemon, and I was just like, who told you this? Who told you this? <laughs> <laughs> not, not because I like, play Pokemon by myself like every day at lunch, you know? But yeah. she's just like, I just got into it over the summer. I'm like, you should come over and we can hang out. And I was just like, okay. And Pokemon at lunch is how I made half of my friend group today, so. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it turned out like that's how it, I got most of my high school friends at, at you know, at the beginning. Was I, I met my high school best friend. Through Pokemon, she she came up to me because she's like, I don't know anybody else that likes Pokemon, but I know 
you would, would play by yourself, so maybe we could play together. I was like, that's great. And we'd like write fan fiction together and hang out. Oh. And, uh, slight segue. So, uh, she and I move, live like four hours away now. But, uh, mm-hmm. but I, I was in Japan in December and her favorite Pokemon is Bulbasaur. And I saw Bulbasaur mm-hmm. plush. So I, I just sent it to her and she's, she replied yesterday. She's just like, oh my god, you sent me a Bulbasaur. This is the greatest thing. He's still my favorite. He's the best Pokemon ever. How'd you, how'd you know I still <laughs> love him? Like, yeah. Still got that Pokemon love. But. Oh my gosh. Um, I, I, I love the Pokemon Center plushies. My best friend now, but ex, Jessica and I, when we were dating, um, every Christmas we'd gift each other, uh, Pokemon, se- like, we'd import, uh, Pokemon Center plushies and give them to each other. Aww. We're still friggin' doing that to this day, four years later. Heck yeah. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. She got me a little Sylvia Aww. this year. Aww. <laughs> so good. It's so cute. Um, but, uh... I think it's so great that all of us meets our friend circles through Pokemon. <laughs> it really d- does bring people together. I mean, that's the, kind of the point of it, and it's mm-hmm. such a wide-reaching franchise, but it appe- but every single aspect of it is meant to appeal to everybody, yeah. so... There's always something to love about it. Even if the games aren't that great, there's always a l- there's something nice that's... Like, there's, there's always the thrill of playing it with your friend that makes, that makes it seem... Still great, like X and Y, yeah. <laughs> and Oraz. I at first loved Oraz because all my friends were playing it, and I at the same time as me, and I'm like, I can play Gen three with people. And then, then I played Emerald again, and I was like, <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> and and Sun and Moon's a step in the right direction. Just not enough of a step in the right direction, Masuda. <laughs> Where's my battle for a tear? Where's my engaging storyline? You can't just bring back hey. Annabelle. So to be fair, Sun and Moon probably has the best storyline of the games today. Okay, that's true. <laughs> um, my, my main problem with it is mostly the Ultra Beasts arc. The storyline itself, very, very good. Lots of emotion, lots of characters. Not not really great for RPG standards, as if I'm going to compare it to stuff like Luna the Silver Star story, but much better than any Final Fantasy game I've ever played. That <laughs> <laughs> even though the Ultra Beast arc is basically you ruined an alien invasion in Pokemon, how why you brought up the idea of parallel universes, and you have Looker, and it's still not engaging. How did you do that? <laughs> Maybe the Sun and Moon arc of Pokemon Adventures will handle it. I'm, I'm, we'll I'm, see. I, like. According to the, the the one interview that I've been able to find with the authors, they said it was a very, very cold storyline compared to what uh, all the other Pokemon games. It was going to be a challenge for them, which, I mean, compared to Black and White and Diamond and Pearl, it's not that cold, but my gosh, <laughs> I can't wait to see what you do with it if you think it's a dark storyline, because whenever they do something, like, whenever they try to do something dark, nine times out of ten, it usually turns out pretty okay, because... We're going to go more in depth into this in the next five minutes, but um, Ruby and Sapphire, I think, was their very um, the Crystal Arc was their very first event of like something like super, super dark and cohesive. That went pretty well. Ruby and Sapphire was absolutely great outside of some Deus Ex Machina, which I really didn't care about because the you know, the focus was on the the focus was on the characters. And if there's a couple Deus Ex Machinas to get the plot moving along, which was a very, very good and pretty complex plot for something that's Pokemon, it worked. Fire and Leaf Green was kind of a. I, I know. I know some people are going to disagree with me on this, but I didn't like it at all. Um, and <laughs> Diamond and Pearl, whenever it wasn't being silly, it was kind of actually sort of scary. Uh, same with Black and White. Um, I, I yesterday at like twelve o'clock in the morning, when I was like blasting my way through it in preparation for this, um, there's the conversation between N and White on the Ferris wheel. It actually kind of chilled me. It was very, it was, it was slightly horrifying. Everything that, like, all, like, White is at the top of her game. Everything's going right for her. She has never been really shaken in her ideals, like, um, and beliefs, like, uh, like Black has. She always just thought that Team Plasma just a bunch of nutters that they occasionally ran into. But her favorite Pokemon, the person that, the, the Pokemon she had been with her entire life, the foundation of her career, and pretty much her life, is Going along with these, with the weird things this empty-eyed, horrifying person that trapped her in a Ferris wheel is saying, it was just scary to me, actually, and my friend too. 
Yeah, it's pretty great. Um, um, almost, almost snapped us out of our out of our little crushes on end. <laughs> <laughs> he's so cute in the games. <laughs> in manga, he's still he's cute near the end, but in the beginning, what a creeper! He's my a God, go back. My God, he's creepy. Like at first, he's hilarious, and then he's just terrifying. Honestly. Especially in an arc that, especially in something that's more like the red and blue and green arcs, um, we're gonna hop around various points of the story, but it's also kind of like Diamond and Pearl's character-based thing with no real goal in mind, and the champion thing is played off more for last because Black is literally yelling in every chapter, I'm gonna be the champion! Just wait for me! <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's funny, but the main focus is mostly on the acting careers and him paying off of his debts, and I was like, oh, this is pretty funny. I like this Team Plasma occasionally, and, I mean, the games handle them slightly seriously, and I'm sure they'll have some sort of aspect to them, and I didn't expect psychological horror. <laughs> <laughs> but now let's weer back and let Lisa finish her story. <laughs> Oh, gosh, yeah, I didn't finish the story. I love you, honey. Um, <laughs> well, let me see. Uh, oh, yeah, so, so in high school, I, I made, you know, all these Pokemon friends. And my my first year in high school was, was my brother's last. And it was when the first Pokemon movie came into theaters. So Ooh. he had a friend that was old enough to get off camp and had a car. So we, like, gave him money to go buy movie tickets so we could all go see it, like, late at night and my brother and I had to convince my parents to let us go see this Pokemon movie. <laughs> it was pretty great. I mean, we all got, you know, the Mew card. Wait, the Mew card? I thought that was oh, only no, given out the, the second, second one. one. You're right, you're right. I went to that one too yeah, while yeah. I was in high school. <laughs> yeah, they had a different <laughs> one. The, the, like, I think with the first movie they gave out like a regular Mew card. No, the they, second... no, they gave out uh, very. They gave out various Pokemon cards with a halt with a, a golden um, sticker on them, indicating that, that you received them at the first movie. Like I had, I had an Electabuzz first movie one. Like it said the first yeah. movie, and then it had like a little promotional thing under it for the first movie. Yeah, I don't remember which one I got, but but anyway, so like I, I went through high school. Pokemon was just part of my life, and then in I think that's about the time that Viz had. Put out. I, I I was collecting the the electric tail of Pikachu floppies. Oh, those are fun, yeah. And like I was really confused because I thought it was gonna be like a comic version of the anime, and it's not, but it's similar. And then Jesse gets pregnant. <laughs> yeah, it was it was very odd, and I was like, oh okay, well, whatever. And then I think around the end of high school for me, this put out like the best of Pokemon Adventure, mm-hmm. and I was like, this is kind of confusing. Because it really does jump around. I don't know who thought this is a good idea. But I was like, but it's cool. It's Viz Kids. And so I, like, I picked up both of those and I was like, I don't know who this yellow girl is, but she's super cute and I really like her. And then in college, I, I found out that, you know, like people were scan it and it was, you know, based off Pokemon Special. I was like, oh, cool. And so I read all the scans I could. And I think at the time, scans were, yeah, there were definitely holes. Um, mm-hmm. But it ended somewhere in the Ruby Sapphire. And I was just like, Ruby is the greatest character. <laughs> oh my god, yes, he is! And, and Yellow is the second, so I'm glad we're in agreement yeah. here. Good taste, good taste. I was like, this, this is awesome. And uh, I started working for Viz while I was in college. And shortly after mm-hmm. I graduated, I found out that they were starting up working on uh, on Pokemon Adventures again. And I just happened to... Uh, no, so it's kind of sideways, but they were also trying this thing where they put chapters of Shonen Sunday series online. Yes, Rene. Rene yeah, so, so Rene was in there, uh, Hide and Closer was in there, and at the time, like, I was a big Hide and Closer fan. So mm-hmm. I remember emailing somebody and being like, I'm so excited that you guys are doing Hide and Closer. And I guess that was forwarded to the Hide and Closer editor who was fantastic. And she's like, oh, do you want to work on Hide and Closer? I was like, uh, oh, she's like, gosh. because after like the second chapter or something, the letterer can't handle it anymore. She's got too much other work and we need a chapter every week. And I was just like, yes! And she's like, oh, oh do you have any other space? And I was like, what? And she's like, in your schedule. Because I need somebody to work on Pokemon Adventures starting with volume oh. five. And I was just like, oh, oh my god! She's like, I don't know anything about Pokemon, but I, I heard somebody else say, like, in the office that you like Pokemon. I was like, <laughs> And so I, I, I did Pokemon Adventures Volume 5. I didn't do 6 for some reason. 
Mm-hmm. And then I did seven through right before, I guess, Heart Gold Soul Silver. So I did all those mm-hmm. volumes over many years. Over I've been I've been doing this for uh, I've been working on Pokemon for seven and a half years, I think. Wow, um, that's awesome. But my my first Pokemon editor, Jan Jones. Super great. She got, like, like I said earlier, she didn't know anything about Pokemon when she started. <laughs> she is still into Pokemon. Like, she doesn't work for Viz anymore. Mm-hmm. She still loves Pokemon. She was so great. Like, I could go in and be like, let's talk about Pokemon. She's like, well, just sit down. Come on. Who, you know, this chapter's super great because this character comes in. She was super into it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that pretty much brings us to uh, where we are. So yeah, so I, I, I did most, I, I guess half of yellow. Through Heart Gold Soul Silver, and then um, a, a couple little side volumes, uh, some of the movie volumes here and there, and then uh, I just finished initial work on Pokemon X and Y. So cool, awesome! For the first time in yeah, like seven and a half years, I don't have any more Pokemon yet. We'll see. Oh, I'm you sure you're will. going to get some more. <laughs> oh God, three series at the same time. I'm pretty sure Viz will be picking up Sun and Moon. <laughs> I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, I would. Im- I would imagine since Pokemon is attempting to grab the audience that it got with Pokemon Go into the um, into the franchise again, like Sun and Moon um, anime release was a big event. The games were a huge event. Like I, I think they sold more. Like like the the numbers have been like spiked from X and Y and Oraz, if I remember correctly. And they of course rebranded themselves with the Gotta Catch 'Em All thing again. And they've been heavily promoting various aspects of the franchise, so I wouldn't doubt that sometime very soon, before the hype for Sun and Moon dies down, which it already has a little bit, they're going to be pumping out the manga in English. Yeah, yeah, it, it wouldn't yeah. it wouldn't surprise me, but no announcements yet. Well, yeah. it hasn't been collected in uh, volume format yet, so I think once that mm-hmm. starts happening. We might get an announcement of that, like, uh, for maybe next year. Sometime. Yeah, there's not enough out to put it into a volume anyways. Yeah. There's like eight chapters, I think. Yeah, it's, yeah, not much. And I think the, but, but the last one has my boy Guzma. <laughs> the last page. Let, let, let me, let me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up the last page and read it out loud because Guzma shows up. <laughs> Let's see here. Isn't that girl a replacement too? Says a character off screen. What makes any different from her? Ugh. Fine, says Hala. I will allow your participation, he says again. <laughs> now that's what I'm talking about. So you're the part-timer? I'm the boss of Team Skull. Name's Guzma. Came to give you an ass kicker. <laughs> Yeah, he's probably not going to say that. But I know he's not going to say that. But that's so... Mm, that's perfect. <laughs> He also looks like he hasn't gotten enough sleep. Oh. Yeah, that's good. That's our boy. <laughs> He's got Gasolapede behind him, looking intimidated. And it's adorable. Yeah. I have a bunch of art of him and Gasolapede hugging. Oh. It's very, very well done too. That's awesome. Anyway, yes, I think I think now's a good time to start discussing red, blue, green, and yellow. Well, actually, first I just wanted to go and brush over just kind of the publication history of Pokemon Adventures and kind of give, like, the listeners kind of a sense of what Pokemon Adventures is a little more. Of so, Pokemon Adventures is a manga written by Hidenori Kusaka, originally drawn by Mato for the first nine volumes, and then afterwards uh, been drawn by Satoshi Yamamoto. Basically, every arc of Pokemon Adventures, referred to as chapters, adapts the, a corresponding uh, game series. So the first arc is the red, blue, and green chapter, and the second is the yellow chapter, and it goes on so forth. And there's an arc for every main series game. Um, when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to third games and remakes, uh, something interesting about the authors, obviously, is that. They, origi- they originally came in with the intention of, like, just doing a manga. Like, the writer was like, oh, hey, this is a job. This is- I'm pulling this from the, uh, uh, from the Anime News Network interview with, um, with, with the author and illustrator. So there is not much I know about them outside of, like, all their little chapter blurbs. So I might be kind of guessing a bit, but this is, I think this is an educated guess. They didn't come in with the intention of, like, loving the franchise or anything. They hadn't played the games. Like, the artist and the author made that very, very clear during the original chapter blurbs. But as time goes on, they become absolutely obsessed with the franchise. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. God, do they become obsessed with the franchise. Um, like, 
Yellow is interesting because yellow, the game is obviously, I have, I have it right here. Here it is. The label broke. Um, <laughs> it's based off of the anime. So, the, the, uh, so it doesn't exactly follow the patterns of the later third versions of the games. And that follows like a girl named Yellow fighting the Elite Four who weren't even mentioned in the red, blue, and green arc. Crystal follows um, the, the new storyline of Crystal, which is obviously um, Isuin, if I'm pronouncing that correct. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Isuin, Isuin. I, I pronounced it Yuizi. Yuizi. He's, I think he's supposed to be French. Uh, following, um, um, and his exploits following Suicune um, with the new female character, the very first female character in Pokemon games outside of the, um, the character Blue is based off, I mean, yeah. Excuse me. Green is based off of... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a weeaboo. <laughs> uh, uh, the character Green is based off, you know, the Ken Sugimori picture of um, everybody standing with their starters um, around a Pokeball looking angry. But yeah, so Crystal's about that. Emerald is where things go straight off the wall because, <laughs> my gosh, did the writer love the Battle Frontier. Oh my gosh. He, he was gushing about it in... Um, um, in some of the chapter blurbs, I love it when those things are translated. Um, and then when the Emerald arc happened, it was basically an excuse for him to show off everything, like all like the teams, the skills that he used. To me, anyways, Emerald is basically a comprehensive guide to every single small mechanic of the Battle Frontier before Pokemon um, Emerald hacking like was finally finished. Like he ha- he has every single possibility worked out, and it's all explained very thoroughly in the manga. And each of the b- frontier brains has like a very specific personality that from the little blurbs that you get before you fight them. And it's just mm, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. However, it's become a bit more challenging to do like the third version or the sequel in later years because now we have a situation with uh they're simultaneously adapting Black Two, White Two, Sun and Moon. And X and Y, because uh, Platinum, Heart, and Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and Black and White, and so on, had like a very close release schedule. And they obviously have to adapt every game, even the remakes. Fire and Leaf Green, that's about Deoxys. Platinum, Battle Frontier <laughs> again, but also Charon. Black 2, White 2 is secret agent, man. <laughs> Track- <laughs> um, and also looking for Purloin, I guess. <laughs> you, got, you gotta have it, man. <laughs> It's it's fun. It's interesting, and I think it's really really cool. But if it's it, it, but the quality and the release schedule is of course dependent on how the games come out. So sometimes it'll be something like Emerald where it's timely. Sometimes it'll be like Black Two, White Two, where the games came out when I was in middle school and they haven't finished the second volume. Yeah. So going back to talking about how multiple like arts are being published at once, Pokemon uh, Special is published in like two different magazines in Japan. Originally it was published in uh Gakuken Grade 5 and Grade 6, and now it's been moved to Koroko Ichiban and Pokemon Fan. And so like chapters are published monthly out of order. And then they're, later on, they are collected and put in the right order in the Tonkabon releases. But since Black 2 and White 2 hasn't been finished yet, there hasn't been a proper graphic novel release for the series in a couple years. So right now, what they've been doing with X and Y is they've been releasing mini volumes in Japan. And those just collect the, stu- the chapters that are published in Korokoro Ichiban, and not the chapters that are collected in Pokemon Fan. So you'll read through the collected material in those mini-volumes, and you'll see some plot points that happened off-screen, and you'll be wondering, like, Huh, when did Y get a Sylveon? Huh, why is Corina suddenly cool with X being a Mega Evolution successor now when she was, like, totally against it before? This is all very strange. So, you know, we're going to have to wait until, like, the proper Tanko Bond releases start to get being on track again to kind of read the series, like... Proper. Proper. Yeah. yeah in more proper cro- chronological order. Until then, Oraz is in proper chronological order. Go and read that. Yeah. So... Visit the, my boy, Ruby. <laughs> so that also kind of applies to the Wiz Media release, and that, uh... Wiz is kind of... They started releasing the series kind of simultaneously in their own way, too, when they started picking it back up again. So Pokemon Adventures, they didn't publish, like, a volume between 2003 and 2010. There was, like, a seven-year hiatus. In 2006, they put out those best-of editions. And then in 2009, they started uh, reprinting the first seven volumes, not 
flip this time and with some new translations. And some excellent lettering. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> You're welcome. I love the font. And then in 2010, they started uh, continuing on forward with Gold and Silver. But also then in 2011, they started releasing Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum and Black and White at the same time. So there were like three different series of Pokemon Adventures all going along at the same time in North America. My my little headcanon for um, the release of the Black and White volumes is at the time Pokemon was um, adding back their gotta catch them all catchphrase, which they hadn't had since Ruby and Sapphire. They got rid of it then because reasons. Um, so the Pokemon manga was actually... There was, uh, I was very excited about this when I was uh, what, uh, when I was in high school. It was actually being actively promoted by Pokemon. Like so, the, um, so like um, they had this website where you could get like prizes and stuff, and a lot of those prizes were actually related to the manga. One of them being the very first chapter uh, that Viz had released of um, Black and White. Uh, and whenever they were releasing like wallpapers, they were using art from Pokemon Adventures, even featuring Adventures only characters like Yellow and Emerald. And using, like, and obviously using their designs, which are a little bit different than the games. Like, I actually, my wallpaper on my mom's computer is still that Pokemon Adventures one. <laughs> it's really cool. So, and like, that, around that time, that's when they started doing the simultaneous releases, like the mini volumes, instead of, instead of doing what I thought they would do, and wait until, like, the big volumes would be released. But, which, the big one being volume 43, which I was really hoping they would do. Because I wanted to read the end of the Heart Gold and Soul Silver arc, which was going to be continued in Volume Forty Three. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you can. I have. It's good. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> and yeah, so uh, an interesting thing to note about the black and white releases that Riz originally did is that they were collected in mini volumes, and these weren't like based on any mini volumes in Japan, but they were taken directly from the chapters published in Koroko Ichiban. Mm -hmm. So again, with those original mini volumes, you had kind of the same problem, that you only got the chapters from one magazine, and you didn't get the other stuff from Pokemon Fan. And then another thing is that when these chapters were redone for the volumes, uh, there were some major changes made, and that... <laughs> dramatically affects the ending of the arc in particular. I don't know about those. So in the original, like, a publication of Black and White, it ends with N just flying off on a Zekrom. Yeah. But, you know, so the, all the other stuff that happens with, like, uh, with a black being sealed inside the, uh, what was it? Uh, Rasharam's White Stone. Yeah, inside the White Stone, that doesn't happen in, in the original magazine uh, release of it. So oh, if you just no. read the mini volumes, you you don't know anything that happened to Black afterwards. And the same thing goes, or the goes for... Or the Seven Sages. Or the Seven Sages. Or anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, or, or the uh, Musketeer Pokemon. Like, how they kind of... I believe they, like, sank into the sea. Uh, like, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Musketeer Pokemon tried to corner the Shadow Triad, and this was, it was also a training test for their um, for their newest Keldeo, who had just graduated, and to um, and to uh, and to save Keldeo, uh, who had rushed into the fray while us uh, while the while the Striaton gym leaders, who are wonderful by the way, and I wish we could have seen more of them. I'm glad that they got a chance to like do something because yeah. in the games, I was very disappointed that they didn't show up with the other gym leaders, and I thought they were like gone, and the Shadow Triad wasn't really used much, but this is, the manga explains why, and it was cool, and Keldeo jumps in the fray, but his masters are, are unfortunately, because Keldeo is still a rookie, to save him. They're frozen, and they sink into the sea. At least yeah. the Shadow Triad is defeated! Yay! <laughs> yeah, so that stuff doesn't happen in the original uh, ch version of the chapter, and so you have to read like the graphic novel version to, like, learn <laughs> what really happened. And it was so, my favorite part, so... Yeah. So, so love you guys. I'm very much looking forward to seeing, like, the graphic novel releases, like, probably starting to kind of move forward now that Black and White is being continued, and then eventually we'll get everything in proper chronological order again. So, that will be nice. <laughs> Very nice. I can't wait for the box set. Make but the posters bigger. Yeah. But yeah, Pokemon, reading Pokemon Adventures is kind of... The closest thing to being as confusing is trying to keep up with, like, uh, a DC or Marvel, <laughs> like, continuity. Oh, gosh, yes. Like, I, uh, um, I always feel like that whenever there's a big crossover. I'm a very big comic fan myself. Now, Black and White, for me, 
it, it turns me off for the same reason that I get, got turned off by the new 52 Phantom Stranger. Started out very, very strong, then the plot, then the gaps between the plot got bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where um, the relationship between Swamp Thing, John Constantine, the question, and the Phantom Stranger was so skewed, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, did, didn't they just come back from hell? What happened? <laughs> It was a sad, sad thing. But, yes, should we discuss the thing now? Well, actually, I had some questions for Annalisa first. Okay. Being that you've worked at Wiz, I wonder if you know why Wiz decided to resume publication of Pokemon Adventures after such a long period of time. And some of the talk process going into, like, releasing the mul- multiple arcs at once in, like, different uh, volume numberings. Um, well, I, I don't know why they initially started uh, re-releasing in 2009, 2010. I assume it's just because people have been asking for years and years for it. Yeah. <laughs> and since they had, you know, released, like, I don't even... Did they even finish the yellow arc when they did the first one? Like, I, I, no. I don't... Yeah. No, the yellow arc was only, like... I think of yellow. They only the best of is the is the best we're gonna was the best they did. Yeah. No, they released uh, the they released the first seven graphic novels oh, okay. originally. Oh. Uh, so you know they did the entire yellow. Okay. Arc, and you know the original releases were all flipped, of course. Yeah. yeah. So you know, uh, and then when they did the reprintings in two thousand nine, they put it in like proper uh, reading order. Yeah. So that was God intended. But uh, I assume it's just because uh, the demand was high enough. It was very frustrating to me because I was told pretty early on, listen, we're only going to put out up to um, volume 14, which is the end of the uh, gold, silver, uh, crystal arc. Yeah. And I was Mm -hmm. like, no, you can't stop there because 15 is Ruby. (laughs) They're like, like, no, (laughs) we're going to do this. But Hoenn confirmed was a meme at that point. <laughs> Everybody knew it was coming. We're going to do this, and uh, then we're going to go to Platinum and Black and White. Platinum? And I was like, okay. And they're like, we're going to make Platinum its own series. So it's not going to be volumes like 30, 40, or whatever it is. Um, it's just going to be, or, well, we have Diamond Pearl Platinum. We have, we have them as one, okay. one full thing. I, I think we called them Platinum. I think it was Pokemon Platinum was how we released it. But really, it's Diamond Pearl Platinum arc. Yeah, yeah. it was released as Diamond Pearl Platinum. Oh, okay. So all three titles were on the line. But, uh, but yeah, so it was kind of weird for me to jump from, to basically skip 15 volumes worth of material. And I, I was really mad, like I said, because the Ruby Sapphire arc is the best arc, because Ruby's the best. It is. And I would send my editor uh, pictures of Ruby ever so often. <laughs> Be like, hey, Let me pull up some. hey, he's pretty off awesome. because uh, he's looking up pretty. <laughs> he's so fabulous, but like the the crystal, the gold silver crystal arc actually ends in volume fifteen. There's, Ooh, yeah, there, I think it actually takes up most of volume fifteen. It does. Well, the first chapter is like the last chapter of uh, gold silver is like sixty pages long. Yeah, so it's, it's like the long. first third of uh, volume Yeah, so it, it takes yeah. up a good portion, so so we were just like, oh, since we're stopping here, we're gonna throw that onto volume 14. But yeah, like, 14 turned out to be a, you know, like, 270 page volume. And, yeah. but, but then I it had, really like... sticks out in the boxes. I had, a, you know, a, a few chapters of Ruby. I, I had the Ross, the Japanese Ross, and so I just, mm-hmm. like, letter those and send them to her, I'm like, hey guys, I'm Ruby and I'm fabulous and you should print me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I do it ever so often, but I guess the I sales you, were good enough way. and the demand was high enough that partway into Platinum, they're like, okay, we'll do Ruby, we'll do, we'll fill that big hole we skipped. And I was just like, yay! But I was really upset. <laughs> I, uh, so we have you to thank for getting oh, yeah. the Ruby and Sapphire Yeah, it was totally published. just me. That, yeah, just me sending my editor. <laughs> you are, okay, by the way, I was having my little brother play, um, play Emerald. And I had him read Ruby Sapphire Emerald alongside of that. That was actually a major thing that got him into actually reading books. Really? Oh, yes, because wow. he could, he be, um my parents actually got mad at me because um I was have because I was like getting these from the library and he, he um he he was ten, he's still ten obviously. <laughs> um, so it, it, he wasn't reading like chapter books. The only thing that anybody could get him to read 
was Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. And he was like, oh, Ruby's so cool. <laughs> and Sapphire is my favorite character. She's so strong and cool. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I did this. <laughs> Yeah, I did this. Uh, um, and like, that was like the very first, it was so, some of the very first manga he'd ever read outside of, you know, the first seven volumes. And, um, now he's just consuming chapter books. Like, he just finished the Mysterious Benedict Society. Now he's, um, reading Percy Jackson. Nice. And reading again through volumes one through seven of Pokemon Adventures. And I'm like, see, parents, mm-hmm. Pokemon is good for you. Pokemon is great for you. Honestly. It helps you exercise. It convinces you to read. Yeah. Pokemon's. A great learning tool for young minds. Honestly, though, like, I honestly think Ruby's character arc is better than most of the character arcs in the Percy Jackson series outside of Percy's. <laughs> Percy's? I like Percy's! Uh, but, again, both of them are centered around daddy issues and gods. <laughs> <laughs> Although Percy's obviously not as fabulous as Ruby. But who is? Who is a Nobody fabulous? Nobody is! He's so fabulous. The, o- the closest anybody comes is probably Emerald, but that's just because of how oddly fabulous yeah, he is. Yeah, he's not like... Yeah. It's not the same. He's a special kind of fabulous. I'm surprised that Viz actually published Emerald. Well, I mean, it is like the conclusion to like fi- the whole like kind of saga that begins in Ruby and Sapphire and kind of continues on. I know, but honestly, Ruby and Sapphire feels very, very standalone. It really does. Yeah. It, um, I mean, it obviously is, and Emerald is what ties it into everything, but I thought it was going to be standalone, but no. Good on you guys, by the way. <laughs> I, yeah. th- th- you, you gave them a love of Ruby, so they went all the way. <laughs> more Ruby, more! I guess the success of the Ruby uh, Ruby and Sapphire convinced Viz to continue with Fire, Red, Leaf, Green, or Emerald? And Emerald? Uh, I think they just decided we might as well just do them all. I'm very upset, though, because when... Viz picked up uh, the Oros manga. I was like, oh, good. You're like, I didn't know that they had it. But I assumed they were getting it because, you know, it's Pokemon Adventure. <laughs> but it was given to somebody else. And I was like, my Ruby! <gasps> I mean, I, I, I probably would have gone crazy trying to work on it because I was busy with other Pokemon stuff. But yeah. I still, like, I haven't read it yet. I can, my editor gives me volumes because I think she feels a little bad, maybe? Like, she apologized later. She's like, I didn't think you could handle the workload. I was like, I couldn't. But I'm still sad. Yeah. So she gives me volumes from it when I ask, and they just sit on my my shelf, and I'm like, aww, I could've worked on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna boycott the Viz release now. Boycott the Viz release! <laughs> and she gives me more free copies. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm so sorry. I, I have to ask. One of my fi- um. So you know how like Viz always has the thing at the end of the book saying, "Hey, you're reading this the wrong way." Are you responsible for the um sw- uh, for the swing on over with Sapphire to the be- um to the beginning of the book? Because that was the most clever. Uh, I, I, I I've been reading flip. I've been reading unflip manga for years. That is the most clever thi- thing to tell kids to turn over the book that I've ever seen. I I, I did the artwork for that. Like I, I uh, did all the cleaning and everything. And I prepped the file, but it wasn't my idea. It was that, that oh. was my editor's idea. She she did a really good job with, with those sorts of things. That was a smart idea. Though. It looks very nice too. It, um, is it was my brother's very first unflipped book. It was a very friendly introduction to that kind of thing. So yeah. <laughs> it was like it's like no sin. You got to follow Sapphire over here. He's like okay. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not like that because he's ten. He's a lot more rambunctious than that, and actually insulted me. But oh, yeah. um. Let's talk about the manga now, because we've been talking about <laughs> everything else for an hour and a half. Yeah. And that about does it for the first half of our Pokemon Adventures retrospective. You can follow Jonathan on Twitter as at Wixy the Valiant, and you can follow Annalisa on Twitter as at Kaito underscore Ace. Make sure to message her to join the unofficial Osamu fan club and support her work by subscribing to the official Weekly Shonen Jump and purchasing Black Clover and World Trigger, among other manga in English, as well as, of course, Pokemon Adventures itself. As for the podcast, you can follow us on Twitter at manga underscore mavericks. 
And you can also follow it on Tumblr, mangamavericks.tumblr.com, and on YouTube. Just search our channel name. Remember, guys, we need those 100 subscribers to get that custom URL. So please like and subscribe our content on there, as well as rate and review us on iTunes. And that about does it. Check out our other podcasts. Remember, guys, you gotta listen to them all. And I hope to see you in the next one. Sayonara!